Today we're going to be talking about how to get more stops in Madden 24. Got a little playoff gameplay for you here. And uh, hopefully this will help you guys get more stops, play better defense, all of that fun stuff. So um, really one of the couple, couple big things that we, we need to talk about in terms of optimizing defenses and offense, especially defense in this video. If you guys want to get all my ebooks on this, where we actually teach the schemes and we update you on them all year long. Join the Patreon. Link's going to be down in the description. That's where you'll get access to all of my offensive and defensive ebooks, as well as all of the updates to those. Now I'm in the dollar defense. I'm actually in multiple defense because I want to run some cover two press. I just honestly feel like it's a little bit tedious uh, to run cover two press from an adjustments perspective compared to free safety zone blitz, but I do think cover two press actually kind of can come in a little better, um, if I'm being honest. So uh, anyways, I'm playing, uh, like I said, I'm in my playoffs. I don't know. I've played this guy before. He's actually not terrible. So we'll see uh, how the, how we do. So anyways, um, so the basic philosophy of defense, every single Madden, there's a couple of key things that you have to understand. The first one is the whole goal of defense, obviously, is to try to prevent them from scoring, right? That is that is the fun, fundamental like goal. Like my job defense, and you could say, well, we want to create turnovers or, or whatever, right? But in general, the biggest thing is we don't want the offense to be able to score, right? And so in that, one of the best ways to do that is to try to make the offense work um, is, is one of the best ways to do that. Another one of the best ways to do that is to... Uh, play a little bit more what we call like bend but don't break allow the offense space to be able to um, to make mistakes but the fundamental philosophy if you really want to get down to the nit and gritty of like how does this actually work right what I would say is in general defense's job is to try to limit the space as much as possible or try to constrain the space as much as they possibly can. If you can do that one thing on defense, you are going to be a thousand times more effective. Okay. If you can constrain the space that is so important as he gets bailed out on a third and long from the stupid illegal contact, you have to be able to constrain the space. That is really, really important. Now, you might say, well, what in the world does that mean? <laughs> um, so what does it mean to constrain the space? Well, it means you have to have a decent understanding of what the offense is trying to attack. What is the offense trying to accomplish? Where, well, offenses in general are trying to attack space or create space. So with that in mind, how can I defensively, number one, make my opponent work? Number two, how can I limit the space based off the formation they're running? Really important because you're not going to defend bunch the same that you're going to defend trips that in. Number one, they're completely flip-flop formations. The formation strength is, is different, right? So those are some really key like starting points. From there, another really important thing to understand is where in your defense you can get access to extra defenders. This is honestly, I think, one of the most important um, defensive tips that I could give you is understanding where your help is is really, really, really important. Um, so, for example, like this guy right here, he's running his bunch to the wide side of the field. He can't really, it'd be a really hard throw to throw a corner out to the right. So I know I don't really have to guard that, right? I know the main thing I'm looking for is something here to the left side or the vertical seam streak, okay? I'm also going to use the, um, I'm also going to want to basically use the, um, oh, what am I trying to say here? I want to use the goal line as an additional defender. That is another really, really important part. So like here, I'm mainly keying. I think we're actually going to do this, play a little coverage in this situation. He's got that tight end. Yeah, and got the, got the stop. So, okay, really, really important. Um, he actually did have the tight end open late, uh, which leads to kind of my next point about defense that is important to think about, and that is how your pressure and your coverage go together. So, for example, if I know that I'm only sending three, then I have to think through, okay, the, the pressure is probably not going to get there as fast as maybe I've sent five would, right? So I want to structure my coverage in a way where it can actually hold up 
for a certain amount of time. And in general, in my opinion, you probably have, if you send three, you probably have about three seconds send, send, um, if depending on how you're sending three, right? So those are really, really important, uh, really important things to think about is, is based off your pressure that you're sending, how long does your coverage actually have to hold up? Now, obviously if they block your blitz, then it might not, it might have to hold up for a little bit longer, but Another real big underrated thing, in my opinion, about defense is I am guilty of trying to do basically too much when I'm playing defense. I'm trying to stop every single route they have versus just trying to take away their two primary reads. If you just take away their two primary reads, you're probably going to um, you're probably going to have a pretty good level of success. So my new kind of philosophy defensively is make them work, constrain the space, and really we're just kind of trying, if we think about it, to really take away their two main reads and then force them force them to go. I don't know why my I can't uh, set up pass protection, but that's kind of lame. And Big Perry is going to throw the ball into Kansas because I didn't blue. <sighs> Struggle is real. Okay, so again, what I said, take away their first option, try to take away their second option, make them throw to the number three receiver in the progression. If you can do that, it makes playing offense really hard because – even as someone who does, I think, pretty decent at progression reads and and I'm just consistently trying to get better at it, it's really hard. I don't know how that oh, – I even got a blue. Um, it's it's really hard to consistently be able to to attack, right? So uh, especially if you're having to – if you're having to go to your fourth and fifth option a lot, it's really hard to do that. So – you really, if you can do even just some of what I just said defensively, um, it's going to give you a significant advantage. Now, obviously, fundamentally, we want to make every single defense that we run look exactly the same. What that does is it limits the pre-snap information that we provide the quarterback, and it really puts them into this game where they have to win the game with their post-snap reads. And if you know anything about Madden, and if you've watched any Madden, you know that even the best players in the world will miss wide-open receivers. They will make bad reads, okay? Um, they may not make a bad read every single drive. They might make one a game. And if you're a, you know, a, a good defensive player, then you need to be able to capitalize whenever they do make that mistake, right? So those are some big tips. Uh, in my opinion, for uh, just playing better defense. I should have thrown the ball to square. See right there, he kind of took away like my first read and then my second read got kind of bumped, right? And then from there, um, it's just really hard to go to your next options and just the timing. And he didn't, I don't think he blitzed many people and his, I don't know why I threw that. See, everybody makes bad reads. I thought he was going to go to the running back. Uh, I'm playing really bad. Gosh, dang, I hate when I... I hate when I make these stupid mistakes on offense. It really drives me nuts because it was, ah, it's just, it's just bad decision making, man. It really is. And now I got to play defense again. Um, I got to get a stop again. So, yeah. Huh, tough being me, you know. But anyways, back to defense. Let's talk about it a little bit more. So, uh, he's kind of doing these like, yeah, you see how he's kind of beating himself? Like, this is another reason, like I've watched a lot of, of lot of Madden, um, especially, in, I mean, this year and really a lot of Madden over the years. And the more I watch uh, Madden, especially at the high level, you watch like a pro player uh, play, there's mid zone doing its job. Uh, you watch like a pro player play, or like for example, Skimbo is one of those guys that I love to watch because I just think he really, I think he just sees the game. Uh, it, the game is very systematic to him. And that's why I think he's a very interesting case study because he's an example of like, okay, the game is so broken down to him. He's going to do the same basic thing every single time and he can get it. He can get it to work at the highest level. I'm actually shocked that he threw that and I just got to be better with my user there. So, uh, so anyways, like I said, I think he's a, an interesting kind of, kind of case study uh, in all this. Okay. And if you watch Skimbo play, he will literally sit in pretty much the same defense 
majority of the games that he plays. And I, I'm, I'm like, why do you do that? I don't know how mid-zone KO doesn't light up there. And I cannot use her anything to save my life. How does he do that, right? Why does he do that is probably even more important than how he does it. So why does Skimbo do that? He does that because there is a very specific, he has devised his game plan in a way, and this is important for all of us, He's devised his game plan in a way where there is a very specific way that you have to beat the defense. Okay. So he's thought through his adjustments. He has a very specific plan and there are very specific things that are open in light of if you are able to beat my defense, it means you are doing one of these couple of options, right? So, and, and, and that is very, very important for everyone as Madden players, because now we can come back and say, okay, so if he's having to do certain things, then what's a little secondary? Uh, what's a little secondary setup that we can go to that's going to be able to to defend that? Right? Um, it might, you know, it might be something like this, where he's a little cloud flat over there on the left, take away the corner route. He hasn't really been running corner routes as he throws a C route out of bounds. But you see what I'm saying? You want to have kind of similarly to offense. When we talk about offense, when I teach offense, I try to say you want to have a power play, a counter play. Everything from that, everything from there on is constraint theory plays. Um, that's kind of similar. You want to have like your main defensive set or your main defensive adjustments. And these defensive adjustments, and normally they're going to be mainly customized formation to formation. So like you're going to have a bunch strong offset defense that's going to limit the space bunch strong offset can have. You're going to have a bunch strong offset or a bunch offset defense that's going to limit the, the best plays in, in, in that formation and, and on and on and on the trips to tight, all that. Right. Once they show the ability to beat your main defense though, you do need to have a secondary defense that complements that. Um, and you have, to, and that's where, again, it comes back to understanding your strengths and understanding your weaknesses, both offensively and defensively is really how I think you can begin to strategize. Okay if this, then that rules that are very, very helpful. Uh, very, very, very helpful. Okay. So I am really getting annoyed with the pass protection because I can't set up pass protection. So he's just able to scream at me. Oh, that's so annoying. Big Perry with shows. Uh, the way he, uh, I just don't, I cannot stop. I can't set up any pass protection. So I'm just, I'm just praying we pick up the, the A-gap blitz, of course, and then my reads are off. Gosh, dang, frustrating. I'll show you another little combo that I actually think is really good out of this formation and it, because it kind of looks exactly the same as Durham. It's basically this here on the right, but we're going to use this running back wheel route to, um, to try to stop or try to pull the zone on the left. So we'll see if this works. There we go. That was man anyway. Didn't matter. But, yeah. I think that combo is really good because, again, we're trying to we're trying to if this, then that, right? If they do this, then we do that every single time. And it works every single time. And it's timed the same way. And it's thrown the same way every single time. That's an, an example of a, of a systematic approach, okay? This guy's just doing some weird stuff on defense. So we're going to... And I've talked about this before, too. The more complicated somebody gets, the more basic you need to get. You beat complexity with simplicity every single time, um, in my opinion. You beat complexity with simplicity. So simple streak. Like, he's been manning this guy up on the left side a lot, and somehow he's been playing that. It's so like right here. We're just going to streak him, see if we can hit him over the top. Got some bad uh, animations. I've been getting a lot of random bumping, and I'm not really a fan of that. So we're going to get out of this. So I'm not really a fan of how this has been looking. And yeah, we can go this. Let's try. Because he's running so much man coverage. It's like, I mean, he just slant post, man. Slant post just kills man coverage. I think you let this clock run here. Throw a little RPO. We got three timeouts. It gives us a couple more play. I don't know. You probably should have. I probably should have called timeout there, actually. Let me juke out of there. Dree. Big Dree Archer down to the one. Took a little too much time there. But we got Big Daddy Henry 
in the backfield here. And we're mainly <laughs> right here. I feel like there's only one play call. You give the ball to King Henry and you trust. I wish there was a way to make this run a little better than it is. If you watch here, the slot corner on the left, a lot of times can can basically get the, get to this. But it might leave the screen open. Yep, screen's wide open. We'll just take that. Can we break a tackle, please? Can we break a tackle, please, Madden? Uh, okay, another thing you can do, if you're ever facing dollar and you're in Jets, in my opinion, you just go to this. Just go to this little bunch tight end um, because it puts it puts three players in where they're where they're weak basically, and then you should be able with Derrick Henry just to break a tackle and get in. Me getting seven there is actually huge. Another little underrated thing about Madden, especially at the higher levels of the game, the more you um, the more you be play better players um, and and Madden, and this is what I have kind of come to find out. And especially in games like Madden 24, where offense is is really good, defense is it's hard to get a stop. Not impossible, but it's hard to get a stop. Um, similar last year, not impossible, but it's really hard to get a stop. Right? Um, getting getting points at the end of half, and it really, honestly, to me, I mean, it kind of matters if you get ball, but to a degree, it really doesn't. But using the halftime as an extra defender. Is, is really good uh, because even if he got ball, he would he would only be able to go up by one possession. So you, you kind of keep yourself in the game or put yourself in more control of the game if you're able to manage those end-of-half scenarios uh, well, right? In a game where I haven't really played that good, in my opinion, um, especially offensively, we're still up a score with ball. Uh, we still kind of have everything that we need to have. So, and he has not shown any capability to adjust to that bubble screen. Now, you might ask, Cody, what's the purpose of calling a bubble screen on the first play every single time? Again, systematic thinking in Madden in general, you always want to have your offense on a hash mark. It is going to significantly help uh, your routes because it creates that. Again, it creates more space. So that is the main, main logic behind that. Hey, we're Bay beats the press man over the top, and we just got ourselves a free touchdown. Again, this is another thing I talk about a lot, but I think it's so practical when reading the defense. You want to have a little snap read of like off the snap. If this is open, I'm gonna take it. So, anyways, thanks for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed it. Grab the ebooks and the Patreon. Hope this video helped you, especially thinking about defense.